In the last video, we started off with part one of the first class lever creation. So at this point, we have got a good basis as far as having a base plate. We have our standoffs and some, some uh, pillow bearings as well as some fasteners in here to help us with creating our first class lever assembly. So in this case, I'm going to actually bring in another component and I'm up here at the top we do have a, a C channel that I'm gonna go ahead and insert into this new assembly so I just right clicked on that file name I'm gonna bring this up and I'm actually gonna not worry at the moment of assembling it to the rest we're actually gonna do a little kinda almost like a sub assembly and then we'll add it to the rest of it here in a moment I'm gonna go ahead and, and rotate this down so then that way 180 degrees to bring it down into place because we're going to use the surface to help us with um, you know applying like almost like a first class lever you know in this case so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay in this scenario in order to connect it to and to have a nice um, kind of connection between these two I'm gonna grab a bearing flat I'm gonna right click on it and insert into current design now one of the things you can also do is you'll notice there's a, a dot that shows up right here in the middle of the triad. This is kind of the free move. If you click and drag on it, it kind of moves it. And what you can do here is we can get this kind of position to where we want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. Select OK. And you're gonna notice on these parts that actually right in the middle there's several like small dots. And there's one actually on the inside too. What that is, that's the very center of that square opening on each one of the VEX components. It's there to kind of help us out. When you're zoomed out, it looks kind of busy. But when you zoom in, it's going to actually help us out quite a bit. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click on Joint. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to go ahead and rotate around. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to zoom in here. And there's these little kind of pieces that kind of grab onto those square openings. But I'm actually going to put my cursor right on the circle right here in the very center. And I'm going to go ahead and select that when I get it to be bolded. I'm going to rotate back around. And as far as where I want to be, I'm going to try to pick in this center section kind of right in the middle. So I'm actually going to pick this point. And again, I want the one that's here on the outside edge. And that's going to put a rigid joint between those two components. So I'm going to select OK. Much like how we did last time, we use this under the assemble panel, this duplicate with joints command. Same kind of scenario, I can go ahead and select that bearing flat, I can rotate over, and sometimes I'm just going to kind of make sure that I hit that same point on the other side. And it's going to go ahead and duplicate that other part. Saves me some time without having to add in another component and rerun that joint command and pick those points. I can just select it, pick the next point. Duplicates it, and it puts a rigid joint there. The next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some spacers in. So I'm going to right click and say insert into current design. So we'll bring a spacer in. I'll go ahead and drag it up here. Select OK. We're going to joint. I'll select the outside edge of the spacer just like here. And I'm going to select this hole right there because we're going to put those right in that spot. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Select the spacer change over select the other side so now we have some spacers there to help us out it'll keep that um, C channel from kind of sliding along the axle there and now here's the only thing that we, we have to do in this case is we're gonna add some screws and then on the inside of the C channel we're gonna add some keps nuts to be able to show that that's how they're kind of fastened and held on so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually use Rather than bringing in a whole new screw, is I'm actually going to go up here to assemble and say duplicate with joints. And I'm going to select one of the screws that we have right here that we've already placed. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on the, again the outside edge. When I see that bolded point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on all those. And I'm going to go ahead and add these in. Okay, so there's our screws. I can select OK. And if I rotate underneath, I can see that the half inch screws, we've got a little bit of kind of some, some of the screw poking through. We don't have the threads showing just because it's easier to kind of pick from without threads in the assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a Keps nut, insert it into the current design. 
Let me drag it up here. And depending upon, you know, you may have to rotate it to get it into position. But here's what the caps nuts look like. And it has just these little teeth here on the one side. So I'm actually going to run the joint command. This outside circle that's right here, if you're out on this face, you get a lot of points. I'm going to go here and I'm going to select that point. I'm going to rotate underneath. And where I'm going to select is right here on the very end of your screw. Now you may need to flip this and you may have to offset it by about 0.2 inches. So, and you can either type it in, but you can see by 0.2, it gives you a little bit of room. So then that way that, um, you know, that it kind of just signifies what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna select okay. Now what I can do here is duplicate with joints, select my caps nut, and select the end of my next screw. And you can see it's gonna put one right on there for me, right in the spot that I need. I'm gonna rotate around and do the other side on the inside there. And make sure that I've got those four caps nuts all put in there for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and select OK. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in the four inch drive shaft into this component. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up here. As far as how we're gonna make this kind of work is, I'll we'll select OK. So I'm going to go ahead and select joint on the very end of, of the shaft. I'm going to choose right in the middle. And right here on the end of the spacer, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now we are going to need to do a little bit of an offset. So I'm going to select over to the front. And you're going to see that maybe about an inch offset is going to be perfect. It's going to definitely help us make it nice and even. So I'll select OK. And with that, we're going to add in a shaft collar. So we need something to kind of help us hold on in those cases. So I'm going to kind of let this sit out here just for a moment. And I'm going to select OK. And I can go ahead and close my data panel because I believe this should be all the components that I need. But as far as this goes, I can go ahead and grab my joint command. And what I can do here is like for example, I can pick the circle and actually what I want to have happen is I actually want to pick the end of the shaft. So the end of the shaft right in the middle, go over to the circle on the pillow bearing block, select it, and then it's going to, it looks like it's only going to bring the shaft over, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offset this to make this look kind of center. And the offset value is going to be about a 0.7 to make this look okay. And I'm going to select okay. Okay. So now here, if I take a look and if I click in and and kind of take a look at this I can see in my joints folder my last joint that I applied was rigid 28 if I right click on that and select edit joint I actually if I want to give this a little bit more realistic approach either I can go in the motion tab or I can use this little quick uh, select menu I'm gonna change that to a revolute so it actually spins inside of there and now to kind of give it a little bit more of a realistic look is if I click and drag on the on our part there's what we have going on so I can actually kind of kind of move this up and down like a seesaw I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna joint the shaft collar on I'm gonna choose the circle portion I'm actually gonna choose to make sure because these are gonna spin with the shaft so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the end of that and then I'm gonna go ahead and offset this so here as far as what we're looking for we're probably going to look at about a value of about 0.4 because I think 0.45 actually is going to put us in interference between those two parts. So a 0.4 or even a 0.42 would probably work just fine. Uh, even 3. And actually 0.44 looks like that lines up pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and that I'm going to keep it as a rigid joint and select OK. So now if I move that, if I move that, you'll see that shaft collar spins with it. So which is really the what's going to happen when you actually build this with VEX. I'm going to go ahead and go to assemble, duplicate with joints. I'm going to capture the position. So I want to capture what's currently there. Select the shaft collar 
and then when I go over to the other side I want to pick the end of the shaft now you'll notice if I make a mistake I can always go over here to this more and I can say clear the last duplicate choose the correct end that I want and now I can kind of see that okay it may have may have not really liked what I did here let me see if I flip it it looks a little bit better now not quite exactly where we want it but we get the idea we're gonna have a little bit of room a little bit of tolerance right so and that works perfectly for what we want so now here's our first class lever and with all of our components and now we're ready to now that we have this ready to go now's your job to start looking through vex parts and you're gonna build this just like how we did here in fusion